Hey nerds, JJ Kai Morris here. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm very excited to bring on Rod Gilly on the show for a little interview. Rod is a horror, thriller, and fantasy author as well as a fellow YouTuber. So we have a lot to talk about today. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about his writing journey and about his experience as a writer on YouTube. So uh, without further ado, please join me in extending a very warm welcome to Mr. Rod Gilly. All right. Hey, Rod. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, you are a fantasy horror and thriller author, as well as a fellow YouTuber. You have the channel Relax and Chat on your YouTube channel where you interview fellow authors. Um, and yeah, I'd just love to hear a little bit about, uh, you know, a little bit about yourself. If you could just give us a little quick little intro, the, the short abridged bio version. <laughs> okay. Well, my bio is pretty short anyway. Uh, but um you know, I, I've been a writer now for just under two years that I've really considered myself a serious writer. Uh, briefly, I was a writer when I was a teen and in my into my 20s. Uh, all of my work got stolen and I got disheartened and I just moved on to other things. I've owned five businesses. Uh, four out of five have been pretty successful. Number five is in the works. We'll see where it goes. Um and then all of, I, actually, I had kind of a turning point, sort of an epiphany, I think the word is, as I met our author and was just chit-chatting with him and looking at some of his books. And I'm holding one of his books in my hand and it just clicked. You know, I remembered everything I did when I was young and I was like, God, I love writing stories. I, I love letting that creativity flow. Uh, I can paint on canvas. I could paint your portrait, you know. And that's just another way of artistic creativity being released. Well, writing is also an artistic endeavor, even though there's a boatload of work in it. And uh, so, I mean, I just stood there and I remembered how much I loved it. So when I got home, I got on the computer in my office and just started scribbling out, typing out, you know, just an idea that I had. And I got, oh, I don't know, I think it might have been a thousand words. And I asked my wife, I said, give, give this a look. Tell me if it's garbage, you know. And she read through it and she said, I really think you got something there. Keep writing. And that was the beginning of my novel, Kane. Um, oh, okay. and, and I started working on that first. So a lot of people start out with short stories. I started out with a novel. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think it's really special. I think it's going to do well. Uh, and I, I worked on it for quite a while. And I sort of started getting a little, and I don't know if burned out is the right word, but it's a very dark story. And I just wanted to lighten it up for a little while. So I started working on a novella that is a, I, I call it a YA fantasy. And that kind of lifted it up a little bit. I played with that. I've got a little fella in there that every word he says, he speaks in rhymes. And it's just <laughs> fun to write that, you know, it's fun to write that. And uh, so that kind of gave me that loosen it up thing, you know. And yeah, yeah. I, I love that you that you write dark fiction. I was reading a bunch of the, the stories that you have on your website. Um, for, for people who don't know, I'm going to drop your website down in the description. Um, oh, and cool. you have a bunch of really great little stories on there. Um, I was reading the Sitting in the Dark and the Serenity 1, 2, and 3 and the, the Real Old West. And I mm -hmm. you you I feel like you understand that that need to kind of write dark fiction um, <laughs> that, that I have out of my mind might be a little bit darker than that <laughs> you know I might be a little <laughs> scary on the scary side but um yeah I, I love that you you go down that that dark path is your is your wife ever concerned for you <laughs> uh she was quite concerned uh about halfway through my first draft of my novel okay uh, it gets very dark uh, that novel's got some very dark stuff in it it's definitely for adults uh and I'm proud of that because I'll never be the writer that Stephen King is, but my my novel's just as creepy as anything he's ever written. It's this creepy. <laughs> good, and, good. I'm excited to read it. <laughs> I call it a paranormal thriller. And uh, the full mm -hmm. title is Kane, Book One of the Taylor's Apprentice. Now, that's a working title. You know, mm -hmm. if I publish it with a publishing house, they'll probably change the title. But, but that's what I've used since I started writing it. Uh, two things I love to do is, well, I feel that if you're writing something, you need a title. It just kind of keeps you focused. And I love to create uh, a card, a thumbnail, a picture 
to go with my story because the visual image of my story inspires me, you know, keeps me going. I can look at that and say, oh, yeah, that's <laughs> where I was going. That works. You know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that that does certainly help, too. I, I, I yeah. agree with you there. I'm usually too lazy to, to go create the little image thing, but <laughs> I have it all there in my head, you know. Um mm -hmm. But so what I mean, you just looking at you, you seem like you know pretty pretty normal, happy guy. What 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 is this darkness? Where does this come from? <laughs> uh, really, um, very little of it is me. There is a little of it. Uh, I did a video not too long ago that that uh, I did my first effort at a dramatic reading of a contemporary poem, which was the first one I have ever written a contemporary poem when I was eighteen and twenty or whatever. Poetry back then, it rhymed. Every other sentence rhymed with it. You know, it was pretty mm -hmm. easy to write that. And I uh, met a great poet. Uh, actually, I've met a couple of great ones, you know, in relation to my show. And contemporary poetry doesn't necessarily rhyme, and it's kind of harder to write, you know. So anyway, I, I put that together, and it's uh, Lone Wolf No More is, is the name of it. There's a Valentine video right now, and then after Valentine's Day, I'll probably put a version up that has Lone Wolf No More, and that'll always be there if somebody wants to look at it. And the reason I bring that up is because it is a reflection of my life. Um, I try to play with lighting and try to make a good appearance online, but um, the left side of my face has some burn scars. I don't know how well you can see them. Well, I got oh, I didn't those scars. Hmm. Uh, well, I got those scars on my face when I was three months old, and I have. Wow. And, uh, you know, I lost three siblings in that fire. And wow. so my mom is like super mom. I don't know how she got through all that because I couldn't have handled it. I'd have snapped a twig. I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would too. Oh, I can't imagine, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. You know, you lose three children and the fourth one scarred for life. That's, and she was like, you know, 20 years old, 24, maybe, you know, somewhere around there. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I salute my mom. She's awesome. And she was a single mom. So that. Wow. That's a beauty. And uh, but anyway, I got these scars at that age. So I grew up being different. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many of your viewers know it, but children are cruel. Oh. <laughs> so yes. I started yes. out started out being picked on a lot, getting beat up a lot, getting a lot of splack for my injury. And uh, I didn't have any choice but to learn how to defend myself, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'll keep it short, but I did learn how to defend myself well. Good. And uh, so that kind of turned around. And my mom taught me at that young child age, Rod, don't worry about what other people think. You know, by the time I was a teenager, that was, I don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, so my attitude came to the surface, but it wasn't what I wanted to be. It was what I had to be. And so that poem reflects on that. And uh, I got a dark side that developed from that. And, uh, you know, the poem kind of outlines it. I, I'm i getting old now. I'm an old man. But there was a time when I could be quite brutal and quite violent. And, uh, you know, I've overcome that. My wife has brought me through some of that. And, you know, I'm, I'm just a little sissy now. You know, my <laughs> wife can't even believe that I used to be able to whoop six men. In and out, <laughs> you know, and I've actually done that when I was yeah. 28 years old. I'm 58. I <laughs> whooped my way out from under the sheets in the morning. I'm doing good. You yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love what you're saying about, um, you know, not not caring what, what other people think. I think that's a fantastic thing to learn in those uh, formative years. Like I spent so much of my time as a adolescent worrying so much about what other people thought um that that is probably one of my you know my biggest regret for like that time period when I was like a teenager is just being so afraid to just be myself so that's that's something that I try to like a, a theme I kind of I go for toward me when I end up writing and stuff and I feel like the the themes that we end up talking about in our writing is very reflective of what we wish we had learned when we were younger what we have learned so far so that's mm -hmm. a fantastic story and I feel like that's you know definitely influenced your writing absolutely for in a good way in a, in a good way for sure so yeah yeah tell me a little bit about you know some of the the projects you, you have going on well, like I mentioned, I, I'm working on my first project, which is my novel. What what stage of the writing process are you on with that? Uh, well, I got it written, the first draft, in about three months. And then I started revising 
and self-editing part. And that's been over a year. And a lot of that is because my work schedule has become so crazy. I, I don't get the time to write as much as I wish I could, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I love the novel. I really think it's going to go somewhere. I don't know how much I can talk about it without giving away spoilers. Yeah, but no there, no spoilers. It, yeah, it begins with a young lady, 27 or so. And she's uh, working out every day, busting her butt every single day to try to be attractive to men because in her previous in her marriage in her high school years she was very neglected and very treated like you know like she was a lump you know and uh so the biggest thing she wants in her life is to be desired she wants passion in her life and so she's young enough she can bust her butt and get that super bod and everything that you know stereotypically that's what men want right and uh so along comes this guy who's tall, dark, handsome, gorgeous, sexy, and has an amazing magnetism. And he's more than happy to give her the passion she wants. But at what price? And uh, it gets very dark from that point on. And during okay. the darkness, her little sister um, is five years younger than she is little skinny thing with cropped hair and tattoos and mm -hmm. she's a tough little chick she really is mm -hmm. but uh you know she lives with her girlfriend and her doggy and they have a wonderful little life and she just plays she doesn't really have to face any kind of adult responsibilities you know well when uh her sister is brought into the, when the main character is brought into the darkness of the story the little sister joe becomes the protagonist she becomes the one that fights the antagonist hmm. and uh the climax scene made me go woohoo <laughs> and the climax scene literally made my wife fall back on the bed screaming and cheering it, it, i love it it's a multi pov scene which they say don't write that <laughs> but it works and i think people will love it so I love my novel and I can't wait to get it done. It's just taking forever. Um, I'm working on that little novella. Uh, and it's kind of neat. It's an 11 year old girl who goes on a family vacation to a cabin in the Appalachian mountains. And she's got this little brother that uh, they call um, the Willie is his name. And he's the chubby monkey. That's the family mm -hmm. name for him. Well, she meets a girl named Tori, and she also meets another character, uh, the character that rhymes with every word he says. And uh, I won't say much more because, A, it'd be very easy to give away a YA fantasy. Once you get to the point, it's done. Mm -hmm. And uh, B, that story's about half written. It's, it's not even, I don't even know where it goes after a point, because I'm a pantser, literally, 100%. I'm typing a paragraph. I have no idea what the next paragraph will be. <laughs> I've said in uh, on screen in one of my shows, I think, that you know someone brought up the the idea of character driven story. I like that term, but my stories are more chasing my characters. My characters take off. They do whatever it is they're doing. <laughs> I'm typing like mad. Trying, I type about forty words a minute. Trying and to I'm, keep up with them? Wow. <laughs> I'm busting my butt trying to catch my characters, you know? I don't want to miss what she just did, you know? <laughs> and I That's love, amazing. So I so that. when you write, like, when you get a story idea, you you have, like, how, how much of it do you have inside your head? Do you have, like, any anything at all planned out, or you just have this, this general concept, or do you start with a character or a scenario? There's something in writing called an elevator pitch. Mm -hmm. You're on an elevator you're standing next to an agent or an owner of a publishing house, and you've got a minute or two at best to describe your story. I've got that much knowledge of my story when I start, a minute or two. Okay. I've got the very transparent, weak overall idea. And then I let the story take it from there. And uh, it's a hard way to write in a way because the editing is a bear. You know, because I'm just <laughs> zipping away, typing like crazy, 
you know, and I'm not paying attention to all the details of editing. So when I get to editing, being a pantser is a lot of work. <laughs> I bet. But yeah, I bet. It's so I mean, editing much. as a plotter is a lot of work, too. I can't imagine. <laughs> but I would think a plotter, a good plotter, if I understand it well, which I don't know everything. I'm not an expert of anything. But um, a good plotter, their storyline might be a little tighter and a little more smart than a pantser. You know, the, a pantser storyline may kind of go off track sometimes and things like that uh as stephen king he knows a lot more than i do but he's the pantser mm -hmm. you know and uh and i know several writers who are strict plotters and for me though it's i mean why did i start writing because i remembered how much fun it was why am i a writer of the day because when i sit down and write i'm having a ball you know watching where my characters are going to go and seeing what they're doing and how they're interacting with each other and i, I mean i'm like you know, a woman in the 1970s watching a soap opera. I'm like, go, guys. Oh, what's she <laughs> going to do next? You know, <laughs> I'm freaking loving it. I'm having so much fun when I write. And and I won't change the way I'm writing. It's, it's just too much fun. Well, yeah, that, that <laughs> sounds like fun. I, I I wish I had that experience when I was writing. Half of my time writing is like pulling my hair out. Like, how do I get to the next sentence? I, I know what I need to happen, but I don't know how I want it to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I did have an experience like that in Kane, where I basically wrote myself into a corner, you know, and uh, I've said this on one of my shows, but uh, it is true that I was like, gee, I'm kind of in a spot. I don't know where to go from here. I'm, I'm backed up into this corner. And I remembered Stephen King talking about, you know, don't give up, get a bigger nail, keep going, you know, mm -hmm. and I don't know why, but it just popped in my head and then it translated a little bit. So I'm backed into that corner and I knocked a hole in the wall and then I kept going, you know? <laughs> and and for me, that worked. I was able to just barrel on with my story and I had a ball, but I got stuck. I've gotten stuck a few times. I think every writer does. You know, I've even experienced the, um, uh, what do you call it, the brain freeze or the writer block, mm -hmm. sat down in front of that white yeah. page and just stared at it. <laughs> I've done it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good, because I was starting to think you were some kind of superhuman writer. <laughs> uh, not by any means. Some yeah. some will tell you I'm a hack and I'm a lousy writer. My family, for example, they would say that. <laughs> well, I think I think everyone I think everyone says that to a writer at some point, no matter how good they are. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a halfway decent writer. I've got a ways to go yet. I don't I think the most foolish man, and I've met this guy, the most foolish man I ever met knew everything mm -hmm. yes i've met i've met a few of those yeah yeah and i'm always learning you know i'm always I, i'm blessed that i learn very quickly i can look at something in a few minutes yeah. and i've got it and yeah uh, i mean you, you're only what two years down your writing journey and already you have some fantastic stories out there you have a, a novelette you have a you know a novella and a novel in the works you're you're you know you've accomplished quite a bit and i think i think that's fantastic i love the stories that i read on your website oh thank you and you mentioned sitting in the dark yes that that's the, actually uh i think of the ones that i read i think that was my favorite was it that yeah. was the very first ever effort to write a short story three thousand words or less that was wow. my first effort to ever try to do that and uh i really like it i've, I've got mixed reviews yeah, you know, it is dark from beginning to end. The main character is somebody you don't like, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, and th and that's tough to do. But I think that is something that I that I enjoyed about it was how you know, uh, it, it is fun to uh, to to see from the villain's perspective every now and again. I I find that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, like I said, I'll just get an idea to pop in my head. Having sort of a creative background, anyway, you know, I, I've enjoyed many of the arts. Uh, you ever seen the movie Little Mermaid? Mm -hmm. Remember the little fat bird and how he sang? I think he was played by Buddy Hackett. Uh, Scuttle, was that his name? Ah, 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 ah. He <laughs> sang like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's how I sing. <laughs> I <have a laughs> Me too, actually. <laughs> and, um, you know, I can't play an instrument. I have tried. I, I love music. I've tried everything from a guitar to a harmonica to a piano. I've tried it all. I really mm -hmm. don't have much talent in that. But, you know, I can paint on canvas and I can write. 
So I put my efforts where things I know how to do that I can do, you know. Uh, been a long time since I painted something. And it's the same thing with writing, and that's why I'm kind of mentioning it. I could paint what I thought was a beautiful painting on canvas. And I used oils, and I was good at it. And I would paint this painting that I thought, wow, this is really pretty. And then I set it in the closet with the rest of them. Nobody saw it. Nobody cared. I'm scared my writing is going to go that way where nobody cares. <laughs> I hope I'm a good enough writer to. Well, <laughs> you're. I think you're doing all the all the right things. Um, one one of the thing that really impressed me about you is how um smart you are about this whole business of writing. Because uh, I mean, people don't realize that there is the craft of writing, which is one skill that you obviously need to develop. But then there's also the business side of writing, oh, yeah. which is a whole other skill. And a lot of people tend to neglect that side. And I feel mm -hmm. like what you're doing with your YouTube channel and interviewing all these authors and getting your name out there, that's fantastic. I think that's like the one of the best things that you can do for your writing. So yeah, tell us a little bit about your your YouTube channel and what, what inspired you to start, start it. Oh, okay. Uh, well, it definitely was is entirely related to my writing you know and um what it is is i started writing my story and i got farther and farther along in that process and i love to learn uh that's just something i enjoy doing and i started researching and i found everywhere i look youtube videos articles on various websites blogs and the more knowledge, the more things i was in the more things i found or saw I realized 90%, more than 90% said, if you want to be a successful writer, and you can define success however you want, but if you want to make some money or you want to get known, you know, you want to do more than print out one book and set it on your bookshelf. If you want to do more than that, you've got to put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of an anti-social guy, but if I want to be a writer, I've got to create that part of my life where I'm not anti-social you know and i'm always sincere but i'm out there i'm doing silly mm -hmm. things like dramatic readings <laughs> Shakespeare Rod, right but you know i found that that was necessary now being an entrepreneur most of my life i understand that in every business there are contracts in every business there are expenses and and you know other things that go along with it and um you know nobody wants an accounting class right now so i'm not going to try to <laughs> teach one but I know just from life experience, no matter what you're doing, you got to stay on top of it. And you've got to separate your personal expenses from your business expenses. That's just a basic of you know accounting 101. So very early on, I created RDG Books, which is a publishing company that right now publishes all of my videos. It published my little uh, short story collection that I self-published just so I could learn how to do it, you know. And uh, I'm getting great feedback on the stories in that. People are starting to see it now. And uh, I, people are saying some really nice things. So that, that made me happy. You know, that little tiny book is not going to make me, you know, my wife and I, when I decided to self-publish it, we said, if this little book makes $5, free and clear, <laughs> taxes and everything, if it makes $5, then it's a success. Yes. So <laughs> the, it's, a, it's the small steps. Yeah. And I think a lot of a pitfall that people fall into as new authors too is trying to become the the New York Times bestselling author as fast as they can, um, mm -hmm. which I mean is a great goal to have, but they don't realize that, that you should also celebrate the the little steps you take along in the way. You know, like oh, the yeah. bestselling authors didn't get there overnight. You know, they they did also celebrate the little the little accomplishments that they had as well. And there are authors, a lot of them probably, that are better than anyone on the current bestseller list. Mm -hmm. Better writers all the way around with better stories. And they just didn't get the breaks. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. Look at Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley is a talented, handsome, rock and roll. He cool. There was a hundred or maybe a thousand Elvis Presleys. He just got the break. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes that's just the way it goes. Life is going to be what it's meant to be. You know, I believe in going for it. Shoot for the stars. If you land on a mountain, you got pretty far. I believe that with my whole heart. But I also look at my novel and my novella and my short stories, and I say, yeah, there's probably going to be a thousand people that say I'm a hack and my stories are crap. <laughs> but there might be a hundred that really love it. And that's going to be good enough for me. You know, yeah. if somebody out there reads my story and they say, man, this is good. I accomplished what I wanted to do. 
you know, mm-hmm. I actually was able to take a part of me, put it out there, and somebody liked it. Wow, that's cool, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and, that, and that's that's fantastic too, and that that's what we're all here for, right? That's why it's why we yeah. we do it. We we spend the hours. We we do the thing, even if it's work, you know, when it feels yeah. like tough work. And that kind of goes along with my next question: is like, what what would you say is the most important thing that you've learned um, from pursuing writing thus far? Like advice or or just tips or just something okay. that you've realized along the way. Well, the most valuable thing I could share with anyone about being a writer. I would say the most valuable thing, patience. Mm. Everything in writing, every aspect of it is going to take a long time. You're writing your first draft. I thought I was rocking fast that I got my first draft done in three months. Three months. You you sometimes will see these. I don't want to dog other people, but you see these video clips. Write a full novel in 15 minutes. Uh, Yeah. 15 minutes. <laughs> you know, I got some oceanfront property in Arizona too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, writing takes time. It takes work. Every aspect. You're writing your first draft. It's going to take you a while. And it's important to realize that, to have those patience, because if you're like, gosh, I've been writing for five months and my story's not done, I must not be a good writer and give up. That's horrible. That's heartbreaking. Because you may be the best writer in the last century, but you won't know if you stop, if you give up, mm-hmm. don't have any idea. So have the patience to keep plugging on, you know, get your beta readers and your critique partners as much as you're able to. When I started writing, I was completely alone. I couldn't find a beta reader. Um, then you're going to have the editing process with editors. And that's tricky because I've, I've sent works out to two, three different editors and each one came back with completely different changes. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. They'll do that. <laughs> so it's, it's important to look at this editor's opinion, look at that editor's opinion, and compare those opinions to your own beliefs, which not only in writing, but in everything in your life. You should listen to advice. But in the end, you need to make your own decisions. You know, So you gather up advice from these people I've just spoke about, and you take your time. And you think about, that's the best thing an editor editor does for you. An editor doesn't fix your story. What an editor does is says, here's another way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. And you go, wow, I didn't think of that. Okay, so here's his or her way of looking at it. Here's my way of looking at it. Which one's better? Or more important, can I blend them? Can I take mine and hers and put them together and make my story even better? (laughs) A good editor will help you do that. Yeah. you know, I don't want to go too far off track here, but that's where a lot of patience comes in because that's very time consuming, extremely mm-hmm. time consuming. And then you get your manuscript perfect and you start querying. That's very time consuming. And you've mentioned the rejections. They get hard, mm-hmm. so, especially oddly enough, easy e-signs, online magazines. Mm-hmm. They're cruel in how they reject you. They really? Like, Oh, man, they're like, hey, you know what? We don't need your work. And that's it. Now, I will say that the uh, presses, small or large, are kinder and more open to being nice. They're very busy people. They can't give you a 15-page suggestion on how to improve your book. But one of the best that I've encountered is Running Wild Press. And what I single them out for is that they have a team of acquisition editors, not just one guy smoking a cigar saying, yeah, I like that one. I don't like that one. You know, Mm -hmm. they've got a team of editors that look at the story and evaluate it. And they may decide to accept it. They may decide to decline it. But here's the magic that it makes me think running wild press is awesome. They look at a story and they say, it it don't quite make it. We're going to have to reject this one. Mm -hmm. They get back to the author and they say, and this is rare. They go back to the author and they say, we can't accept your story at this time. But in all honesty, if you could take another look at chapters three through five and maybe take a look at chapter 11 and polish them up a little bit, get them, get them, you know, fix this, fix that a little bit, give it a little tweak, send it back to us. And, and, oh, well, okay, and, yeah. if it's, and if it's pretty cool, we'll publish it. And as far as I know, I mean, I don't know everything, but 
I, I think that's unheard of. I don't think I've ever heard of a publisher that'll say, send it back to us. Fix it up <laughs> a little bit. Send it back. We'll take another look at it. Most of them won't do that. You yeah, I, I've I've heard a, a couple of, uh, you know, stories of the revise and resubmit uh, stories out there. But they, I feel like they're extremely rare, like you say. Yeah. yeah. And that's great. Like I, to even get feedback in the first place is fantastic. Like I have not received yeah. any feedback from my for my rejections, which yeah. I was hoping to get. But, you know, you can't expect them to. They're busy people. I understand. Oh. Um, but Can yeah, getting getting. Through? Yeah, feedback's great. No, sorry. I was just saying getting feedback is great. I, I, yeah, I value that a lot. And then you go through that continuing on the advice of being patient once your story is accepted and you start working with the publisher's editor that's going to be another step mm -hmm. that's going to take time then it has to go into production and the marketing team and all of that so let's say my novel was ready right now mm -hmm. i'd be lucky if it was available for sale by the end of 2025 i'd be very lucky if it was out that quick it's more likely going to be a year or two, maybe more, you know. Yep. So from start, how long it's going to take you to write your first draft to finish? Someone is picking up your novel and loving it. You're going to get there. I believe it. I believe in people. I believe in people that are willing to try. Yes, absolutely. It's going to take some time. So I'm sorry for being so long winded, but my best advice uh -huh. to a writer is to be patient. Give yourself, you know some time celebrate when you finish that first draft yeah you still got a long way to go but you finished your first draft mm -hmm. well to a nice dinner you know i'm not a wealthy man but when i finished my first draft my wife and i went to gold star chili got a cheese coney and a four-way and by <laughs> golly we were happy <laughs> so be sure to give yourself a pat on the back because this is not an easy task to be a writer and you deserve yeah. to give yourself a little celebration once in a while because it is a long road it's a long absolutely road. yeah but, you, you need to celebrate the little things yeah i try yeah. to but i'm so, i tend to be a little bit more focused on like all right what do i gotta do <laughs> what uh, do i gotta work on next <laughs> edit out my gibberish as much as you need to but the bottom line is my best advice to any writer is be patient mm -hmm. be, be, be patient give yourself time and give yourself a little celebration along the way yeah. Absolutely. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that, with that sentiment. So yeah, before, before we uh, run out of time here, I did want to uh, talk a little bit about um, what you, you offer critique services on your website. I noticed if you could tell us a little bit about that. I'm really curious. Okay. Um, well, I've offered the service for a little while without much knowledge of what I was doing at first. Uh, but I took that I'm a writer. And then when I became published, I took that into consideration. And that I have a natural tendency to be pretty detail oriented, you know, and I sort of kind of blended it all together. And I guess the biggest thing that influenced that was when I was writing my novel, I was alone. I mean, I had the support of a loving wife who's out of this world. Awesome. She's a thousand times too good for me. <laughs> and I'm very blessed to have her. And uh, but I was pretty much alone as far as entering the, the writing world. So I got pretty far into my novel and I I uh, talked to like three editors and I thought, I said, you know, how much would you charge me to edit my novel? And I told them how many words I anticipated it to be. On the high end, it was like $2,000, way out of my budget, way, mm -hmm. way. And that was for one out of four edits, $2,000, you know, because you got the line edit, and the word edit, you got the uh, developmental edit, you know, you got a whole bunch of parts in there. Yeah. And I was like, $2,000 each. Yeah, <laughs> not going to work. <laughs> and I have found some very good, very skilled editors. One I will mention, I won't talk about what she charges. That's between the writer and their editor. But she's very reasonable in her fees, well below that first number. And um, her name is uh, T.L. Humphrey. Trisha Humphrey is an very skilled, very kind, very fun, great editor. I highly recommend her. Um, <laughs> so based on that, I thought, okay, she, Ben White from Running Wild Press, he edited a short story that I have coming out in one of their anthologies. These are brilliant, amazing editors. I will never claim to be an editor. No, there's no way I could see what they see. It's astounding what they can do. 
But what I do offer is a pro critique. And I'll describe that as, uh, let's see. Okay, let's say you get a name brand product at the store and it's 15 bucks. You get the store brand, it's seven bucks. Mm -hmm. Your budget says go seven bucks. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm the seven bucks. <laughs> I'll try my best to do everything an editor does, all the edits. I'll go through someone's work one word at a time. And I will look at the word. I'll look at the sentence. I'll look at the paragraph. I'll really do my utmost best to help them with their story. I am not an editor. I don't have the, an editor's skills. If you have to choose between me and Trisha Humphrey, go with Trisha Humphrey if you can. <laughs> but if you're like me and you don't have a lot of money, but you do have enough sense to know you can't publish this work without getting extra eyes getting someone to help you with it, give you another way of looking at it so that you can clean it up a little bit. You can tweak it. you got to have that. I know from my own writing, I write, 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 write. And then Trisha will show me something that I had no idea that it was mm -hmm. there or that it wasn't there. I yep. wrote it. I read over that thing 10 times. I didn't see it, but she did, you know? So yeah, have, it, you, you know, become very blind to your own work. Yes. It, oh, yeah. it doesn't matter how many times you can reread your own work. You're still going to miss things and not realize that you you messed things up or you put, you know, there's so much things that, yeah. Oh, yeah. Another person's eyes are absolutely important too, to have. That's why I uh, came up with the pro critique. I'll do everything to the very best of my ability to give you the services of an editor. And I'll be honest, I'm not an editor. The difference is instead of $2,000, or maybe $650, I may be able to help you for $200 because okay. I live a minimal lifestyle. I don't have a lot of overhead. And I care about the writer because I am one. A good editor is a writer and a good editor is going to help you basically be your partner in making your story the best it can be. And I'll never call myself an editor, but I will do my best to help you with your story and at a very significantly lower price. I can't do it for free anymore. I'm doing 22 hours of work in a 15 hour work day. Now my time has just got to that point. I'm happy to help another writer, but if it involves, you know, really editing their work, I, I got to make a, you know, I got to make sure there's some food on the table. You yeah, know? Absolutely. <laughs> yes, you know, I like I... hot dogs, but you get tired of <laughs> I might want a hamburger, you know? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I will I will put a link down to, to your site, down in the description for people who want to check out your uh, critique services. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about or share? Any of your projects? Anything you wanted to share with the audience before we sign off? Uh, yeah, you must have noticed by now I'm chatty, but I'll try to keep it limited. <laughs> um, I think it's uh, worth noting that, you know, a lot of people get burned out. You know, they're writing and writing and writing and writing and they're just sick of doing it. I've got just the opposite problem. I'm running two businesses and I'm doing side work as an editor, not an editor, as a critique <laughs> partner. But, uh, you know, and just day-to-day -day life, I've got to pay the bills. I've got to, you know, put food on the table, uh, you know, take the dog for a walk. You know, everything that everybody normally does. I get frustrated because I don't have time to write. You know, at the end of a 15 hour day, I finally got the work done as best I could. And I'm just too tired to open up my book and start writing in it. I'm, that drives me nuts. I'm 58 years old. I don't have time to, you know, old term, but lollygag around. I don't have mm -hmm. time. And, and it's such a struggle for me to find time to sit down and write. And uh, so if you have writer's block because you got a chance to write, <laughs> Maybe you think about the other side, you know, Yeah. because the other side is you've got something inside you that you so want to bring out and you ain't got time to do it. That stinks. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yes. I totally agree. <laughs> and uh, if I want to repeat anything else, it's just something I strongly believe in and life, but definitely in writing too. If you're going to have anything, don't give up. Keep trying. Reach for the stars. Mm -hmm. That may sound silly. You, you'll you have a lot of people, particularly family members, people close to you. That's foolish. Go get a real job. Don't listen to them. Go for it. Don't give up. Keep plugging away at it. You might have to eat hot dogs 
once in a while. <laughs> but you know what? You may make it. You got a chance. The only way to really fail is to not try. And it doesn't matter if you're building a house or writing a book. Just, just don't give up. Keep learning. Keep trying. Do the best you can with everything you got until you can't no more. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the best thing I can say in this whole video. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. I th I'm, not, I'm sure there's tons of people who really needed to hear that today. Um, so th yes, thank you for sharing that that inspiration. And it, it is something that we all need to remember. Absolutely. But yes, thank you so much for uh, taking the time out of you. I know it's what is a very busy schedule of yours to come <laughs> chat with me on my channel. Um, I really appreciate everything that you shared. And I just love talking about writing and, and sh hearing other people's journey and seeing, you know, how it differs, how it's similar. And so, yes, thank you so much. And I will drop all of your links, all of your socials, all of your information down in the description. For those of you who are watching, if you want to check out more of Rod's work or you just want to check up and follow him on, on Twitter, then all that will be down in the description. And before we go off the air, I've got to ask you a favor. Sure, yeah. I want the audience to hear this. You've got a novel coming out. <laughs> you got to let me know when it's coming. I'm so <laughs> eager to read it. Yes, I, I do. We have... What was, Sorry? The, name? What was the name of your uh, upcoming novel? Oh, uh, Trials for the Haunted. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't have a set release date yet. So it's still in the works. Um, but, yes, I will absolutely keep you and everyone posted on the uh, release date. Somewhere around the end of uh, the end of this year is, is what we're projecting. But, uh, yes, I'll absolutely keep you in, in, in the know. As I'm sure you will keep me informed of when you release your novel. I'm very excited to read that. So. Yeah, it would be a lot of fun. Uh, I am. I'm really looking forward to your novel. And I've got a copy of Eris. And as soon as I can find a minute to sit down, <laughs> um, your schedule, I am yeah. so eager to read it. And I can't wait to read all of it. I'm very <laughs> eager. <laughs> I'll let you know when I've finished it. Okay. Um, all right. Thanks, Rod, so much. I, re I really appreciate that. That means a lot to me. I appreciate all of your support. And of course, yes, I, I look forward to supporting you in the same way um, with all of your releases as well. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you all for watching. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's do this again sometime when you have your release. All right. That sounds great.